First Steps with Ira Fermaya. You can find the Ira Fermaya plugin at the official nvidia.com website. Here you can either purchase or download a 90 day trial. Just fill in some details and you'll be sent instructions on how to download the install file. OK, you should see an extra icon here in the top right hand corner. If you click on that, it'll display the IFM control box. Now, if you don't see this, you probably don't have the plugin loaded. So go to Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, find the Iry for My section, and make sure it's loaded. You should also set the auto load if you want it to load every time Maya starts up. So let's take a closer look at this new IFM control box we just loaded. Firstly, there's the logging manager, which controls the amount and type of information that the IFM plugin sends to the Maya output window. The queue manager allows us to log into a VCA or a remote machine running IRA server. Here, I'm just logging into the IRA server running on my local machine. From here, we can submit jobs to render. The resource manager allows you to choose your hardware settings, such as how many GPUs or CPUs you're using and how many cores. You can also connect to the cloud, in this case, an IRA server, and stream. The render view controls are disabled until we actually render an image. So let's pick IRA Interactive and do a quick render. Now we can view some of the canvases we've set up to render, such as diffuse, glossy, specular, environment, maybe a custom LPE. We can also play around with the exposure value or the gamma, and if we go back into a depth map, we can change some of the values to get a better depth map out of it. Now one thing to be aware of is these controls only affect the render view. These will not be saved with an image. iRay for Maya supports most Maya camera attributes and adds a new iRay section for tone mapping. Here you can sign a basic or advanced tone map to any of your render cameras. Now unlike the color correction options in the IFM control box, these changes will be reflected in any saved rendered images. Don't forget to put your display controls back to the default values so you can see an accurate representation of the rendered image. Let's move on to meshes. Now iRay for Maya doesn't support the standard Maya object display options with the exception of visibility. However, it does add additional iRay settings in the transform and shape nodes. We can turn off primary visibility, which still lets the object be seen in reflections and cast shadows. Or turn a mesh into a matte object where it still catches shadows and reflections. IRA Interactive doesn't support matte objects, so let's swap to the IRA Photo Reel. There we go. We can also allow object instancing or turn on Shadow Terminator Offset, which helps remove self shadowing artifact. We can also add a handle for light path expressions or add an object ID. Finally, we have a couple of options for motion blur. Let's have a look at the shape nodes now. They look very similar. We don't have any motion blur options, but we do have a new option for displacement. If we open up the hypershade, we'll find there's a new iRay section. All iRay nodes start with IFM. Here we find the two main light sources iRay from Maya uses. The scene we've just been rendering uses an image-based light. Below that is the materials. There are four base IFM materials we use. The fifth, the IFM MDL material node, is what we're using for the car and allows you to load custom MDL materials into the scene. These materials can be used by themselves or layered and blended via other IRA nodes to create much more complicated materials. We can make objects light emitters by applying an emissive material to a mesh. 
We can add a top coat to the material by adding a glossy clear coat or soap bubble colour refraction effect with thin film. We have a set of tools where we can blend two materials together, put different materials on the front and back faces of a mesh, or add displacement, rounded corners or cut out alpha. We can also turn a normal material into an emissive one with the IFM add emission node. Ari from Maya also comes with six 3D procedural materials. Finally, we have helper nodes as well as a solar configuration node for accurate lighting at a specific time, date and place. Lastly, let's take a look at the render settings. In general, these are the same for both IRA Interactive and IRA Photo Real. For the common tab, these are familiar settings. The IRA Common tab has options for adding out still frames or IPR renders to disk, enabling instances of the Shadow Terminator offset fix. You can also change the precision for the IBL maps. There's also a section for global motion blur. And finally, you can set up a region of the screen to render. The IRA tab has the main IRA renderer settings. Here you can set the maximum path length, caustic, or architectural samplers, and you can turn on and off a Firefly filter. There's also filtering to soften the rendered image. Set termination criteria. We can also tune the responsiveness when doing an interactive render. In post effects, we can remove graininess in the rendered image by applying a degrain filter. The higher the number, the more aggressive it is. We can also cause bright areas of the image to glow with a bloom filter. And lastly, Output contains the 20 render passes we set up with presets or custom light path expressions. These are the ones we showed earlier. There are also auxiliary canvases, such as depth, distance, normal, object and material ideas. Interactive has a couple of additional options, ambient occlusion and shadows. For more information, go to nvidia.com forward slash iray or join us on the Advanced Rendering Forums.